Out here on the homestead, we keep goats for milk and for meat. Unless you go ahead and buy a very expensive purebred dairy goat, you're going to end up with a mixed breed like this. Now she's got some British Alpine in her, and that's a good milking goat, but they also have some boar goat in them, and who knows what else. I bought my first goats that these came from, from a neighbor down the road. So the first step is to get her into the stanchion. You'll notice that there's plenty of room here on either side of her neck. This is adjustable for different sized goats, and she's actually pretty happy getting her little grain while she's getting milked. Goats have two mammary glands collectively making up the udder. Each gland is connected to a teat with an opening at the end called a street canal. There's a sphincter around the street canal that prevents milk from flowing out when she's not being milked. Some goats have stronger sphincter muscles than others, so they're more difficult to milk. You'll notice I keep the area around the teat pretty clean of hair and dirt. One thing you can do is called a dairy clip, and just use your scissors. Before you begin milking, you should clean the bottom of the udder and the teat just to get rid of any hair or contamination. And you can use soapy water, or you can get an antiseptic solution just for teats at a tractor supply store. When it comes to milking, it's easier said than done. You just don't grab onto the teat and start squeezing, and you don't grab anything up here in the mammary gland. So with a bigger goat, you can wring the top of the udder with your first finger and then work your way down like this. But with a small teated goat like this, I'm going to press with my thumb at the top and kind of rock it down like this against these two fingers. The first couple squirts of milk, go ahead and discard those. They might have bacteria or dirt contaminating the tea opening. And then go ahead and collect as much as you can from one side and then work the other side. It definitely takes some practice, both for you and for the goat. Once she gets used to it, I think she likes the release of pressure from the udder. When you're getting a thin stream, or none at all, you, there's still a couple things you can do to get a few more good solid streams of milk. Pull your milk container away and bump the udder as if you're a kid stimulating the milk letdown. And then go ahead and you should have a few more steady streams. Okay, another thing that you can do when it starts getting thin is gently hold the udder with one hand. You're not squeezing, maybe just a little pressure, but not squeezing and that tends to help stimulate some more letdown as well. If a goat isn't milked regularly and it builds up some milk, the milk will be resorbed into the body. As the summer gets warmer and the daylight gets shorter, production of milk will naturally slow down and stop altogether. One question I always get asked is how much milk do I get from a goat? Well, that's a complicated question. It's like asking how much corn can you grow on an acre of land? It depends. For these goats, I get about a quart of milk per day. And that's plenty for a small family for a few glasses of milk a day. Now, if you have a purebred dairy goat, you can get three or more quarts a day. The record, believe it or not, was three gallons a day from that goat. And one final thing, their peak milk production is going to be a couple months after they gave birth. As the season goes on, the milk production is going to slow down. It's best to milk into a stainless steel container instead of plastic. That's because plastic gets scratched from scrubbing and cleaning it, and that leaves tiny nicks that can harbor bacteria. You should strain the milk to remove any hair or dirt that might have fallen into the milking container. I'm using a little stainless steel type of strainer. You could use cheesecloth as long as it's clean. Now, I don't pasteurize my goat milk, and I've never gotten sick from it. If you want to pasteurize it, warm it up to 145 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Remember, most people in the world don't drink pasteurized milk, and there's more and more evidence that unpasteurized or raw milk may have health benefits.